Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the Violent Boys. Sun Valley is a neighborhood in the San Fernando Valley region of Los Angeles County. It's bordered on the northeast by Shadow Hills, on the southeast by Burbank, on the south by North Hollywood, and on the west by Panorama City, in the area that is now Sun Valley. A small town called Robert sprung up, named for the proprietors of Robert's General Store, the only business in town. In 1896, the community's name was changed to Roscoe, for reasons that are still up for debate. In 1950, the community's name was changed to Sun Valley after a campaign by local businesses and residents. After World War II, houses and various manufacturing businesses sprung up as Sun Valley matured into a suburban bedroom community. Today, Sun Valley is a community in transition, one that is striving to improve its image and increase the quality of life for its residents. Its neighborhoods vary from the Shadow Hills horse properties and the moderately affluent hillside homes north of Glen Oaks Boulevard. The once mostly white blue collar population has been supplanted by Latinos, who now make up the majority of Sun Valley residents. The Violent Boys were created in the mid-1980s, when a few young boys, who were former associates of the 18th Street Gang, came together and formed the Violent Boys. They took the name Violent from their crew, which played football on Violent Street in North Hollywood. Among the early founding members of the Violent Boys were Teddy Lopez, also known as Green Eyes. As young teenagers, Teddy and nine other Violent Boys began their criminal journey. In January of 1998, the boys attempted a robbery that resulted in the murder of 26-year-old Carlos Cardoza. More gang activities followed, and their criminal conduct led them in and out of the LA juvenile facilities. The dominant 18th Street Gang considered the creation of this new gang by its own members to be hood hopping, and had been at war with the Violent Boys ever since. This betrayal of the 18th Street Alliance would prove fatal. Without gang veteranos and old school traditions to guide them, the Violent Boys made many mistakes and often violated the Sereno Regulas. The Sereno Regulas are the unwritten rules established by the Mexican Mafia. The Violent Boys would commit spontaneous drive-by shootings, which left many innocent civilians hit, including women and children. The Violent Boys were eventually green-lighted by the Mexican Mafia, meaning that they became fair game and open season all Sereños. In jail, the Violent Boys had to be in their own module, they could not be in general population, but they would be assaulted on site. Ten years after forming the Violent Boys, founder Teddy Lopez was attacked with knives and beer bottles at a nightclub in Monterey Park. Other gang members at the club had recognized him as marked for death on the hit list. Some of the suspects yelled Sereno and Pacoima as they murdered him. Following the murders of Green Eyes and the violent deaths of other members, the Violent Boys attempted to mend their relationship with the Mexican Mafia, trying to make up for past poor Sereno history. They became especially reckless in their gangbanging and have attempted to build an extremely violent reputation to establish themselves as hardcore gang members. On October 16th, 1999, at approximately 8 p.m., Sandra was with her boyfriend Fidel, also known as Fish from Pacoima Southside Locos. He and Sandra were attending the quinceanera for the sister of Fidel's friend, Mario. Fidel drove Sandra to the party in a Toyota Camry they shared. After parking on Remington Street, they walked a short distance to the home where the party was being held. They sat in the backyard for approximately 30 minutes before Sandra told Fidel that she was ready to go. They walked back to the car. The two began to argue as they stood outside the car. She wanted to go home, but he wanted to stay at the party and find a ride home with someone else. Sandra heard loud female voices and music coming from a green car driving towards them from the opposite direction. Another white car drove down Remington, stopped, and backed up so that it stopped alongside the green car. Sandra heard her voice yell, it's the homies party. The green car accelerated forward past Sandra. She saw that the persons inside were females. A gray car then pulled forward and stopped alongside Fidel. There were five males inside. The front windows were rolled down completely. The back windows were halfway down. Raphael, who was the front seat passenger, asked Fidel, what homie doing a party? Fidel said, it's my friend's sister's quinceanera. Raphael became angry and responded, I know that, but I asked you what homeboy's doing the party. As Fidel leaned into the front passenger window, Sandra could see Raphael holding something that looked like a black revolver down in his lap. She then saw a big flash and a loud bang. The gray car immediately drove away. Fidel had fallen face down on the street. Sandra turned Fidel over and saw him bleeding and gasping for air. They drove Fidel to the hospital, where Fidel died from a gunshot wound that entered his lower lip and pierced his jugular vein. Eric, 
also known as Brains from the Violent Boys, testified for the prosecution in exchange for immunity. On the night of Fidel's killing, he was also in the gray car with the other males, and he identified Rafael as the trigger man. Rafael Gonzalez from the Violent Boys was found guilty of first degree murder. He was sentenced to 25 years of life. In late November 2001, Juan, who was a member of DWP, which is a crew in Pacoima, was shot by a member of the Violent Boys gang. Juan suffered non life threatening injuries. A few weeks later, on the afternoon of December 11th, 2001, Edgar, who was also from DWP, was stabbed after being chased by four Violent Boys near Poly High School. Christian was called the day after the stabbing and told that his friend Edgar was in the hospital. On that same day, Angel, Mauricio, and Juan, who were all from DWP, visited Edgar in the hospital. Mauricio indicated that word on the street was people were identifying two groups, the Violent Boys Gang, or a group known as Evil Kings, or EK, as being responsible for the assault on Edgar. Mauricio described EK as wannabes who looked up to the Violent Boys, but many of them getting absorbed in. Mauricio told Edgar in the hospital, we're gonna get some get back for what happened. On the morning of December 13th, 2001, Angel drove his green Jeep with Juan in the passenger seat. They picked up Christian and Mauricio. The four men then drove to the area of Poly High School. Angel said to the group, we about to get these fools. At around 11.20 a.m., as Rafael was on his way to class at Poly High School, he was held down by the front passenger in the green Jeep, who shouted DWP. Juan then asked Rafael, where you from? Rafael, a ninth grader who had a shaved head and dressed in gang attire, but who was not yet a member of the Violent Boys, did not respond and walked away. The Violent Boys are the dominant gang around Poly High School. The Green Jeep then drove down the street, made a U-turn, and returned to the area. At trial, Rafael, then an active member of the Violent Boys, testified that EK was friendly with the Violent Boys, while DWP and the Violent Boys were rivals. A few minutes after Rafael encountered Angel's Green Jeep, an eyewitness named Robert saw the Jeep in a white Honda at the intersection of Sharp Avenue and Sheldon Street, three blocks away from Poly High School. Robert saw an arm holding a gun reach out from the rear window. On the driver's side of the Jeep pointed the Honda. Four shots were fired. The driver of the Honda made a U-turn and left the intersection. The Jeep also made a U-turn and followed the Honda. Around the same time, Santiago, also known as Lil Boy from the Violent Boys, and Martin left Poly High School that morning to smoke weed in an alley across the street from the school. As they crossed the street to get to the alley, a green Jeep passed in front of them. Once in the alley, Santiago and Martin were joined by two girls from school. As the four students smoked weed, Martin noticed the green Jeep was now parked in the alley close to Sharp Avenue, a cross street that bisected the alley. Martin observed the four occupants of the vehicle looking at them. After five to 10 minutes, the green Jeep left the alley and drove away up Sharp Avenue. After they finished smoking, Santiago, Martin, and the two girls walked down the alley to Warshop Avenue. Martin lagged behind the group as he was rolling another joint. He then heard a car coming, looked up, and saw the green Jeep return. The front passenger, Angel, aimed a black revolver and fired one shot at Santiago. Martin took cover behind the cement wall and heard two additional shots. The green Jeep drove past Sotelo to Arpiora Street. Martin ran to Santiago, who was lying on the ground at the end of the alley, and looked as if he could not breathe. He ultimately died from two gunshot wounds in November 2003. Violent Boys gang members shot and murdered a Burbank police officer and wounded and paralyzed his partner. Gangbanger Ramon Aranda was killed during the shootout with the Burbank officers. Almost two weeks later, the remaining murderer, 19-year-old David Garcia, was tracked down and arrested. Other gang members and their enabling families proved uncooperative. Many were arrested for interfering, obstructing, harboring, and abetting the case. On March 20th, 2004, Javier held a party at the home of his wife's family on Valerio Street in North Hollywood. He invited between 30 and 40 guests, but additional people attended as well. Armando was a work associate of Javier. Around midnight, a male bumped into Armando's friend Rudy, and the two began to yell at each other. Someone yelled, Violent boys. Over the loudspeakers, the DJ said, Come on, y'all, this is a family party. Everybody just relax. Have a good time. Rudy and Jorge continued to argue. Jorge was from the Violent Boys. A male wearing the same type of clothes as Jorge removed a handgun from his pants and said, Violent boys, fool. Where you from? When someone yelled, Pacoima. 
In response, Jorge yelled, Thump a coin! A few minutes later, after Armando went inside the house and out the front door, he heard a female scream, Stop, Jorge, stop! Three to four gunshots then rang out. Within five minutes after the shooting, as Armando drove away from the party, he saw Jorge holding a gun in his right hand and walking slowly away from the shooting scene. Mabel, who was another guest at the party, also heard the gunshots. When she got to the street, she saw Abraham lying on the ground a few houses away from the residence. She saw blood in a hole in the chest area of his shirt. When she removed Abraham's shirt, she saw a blood hole. An ambulance arrived and took Abraham to the hospital where he died. He died of a gunshot wound to his back that perforated his right lung. Jorge Gutierrez, also known as Sad Eyes and the Violent Boys, was found guilty of first degree murder. He was sentenced to 50 years of life. In June of 2005, a task force comprising 1,300 officers and agents from six local police agencies conducted Operation Silent Night, aimed at dismantling the Violent Boys. During the subsequent two years, over 35 members of the gang were convicted. Follow-up cases also led to the conviction of a Burbank City Councilwoman who was linked to the Violent Gang. In January of 2019, 31 Violent Boys members and associates were indicted in an effort to consolidate over their territory in Sun Valley, North Hollywood, and Burbank. The Violent Boys shot and brutally assaulted rival gang members, controlled and conducted drug and firearm trafficking activity, and extorted money in the form of taxes from drug dealers. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.